Welcome back. Again, my name is Chris Miskaitis. I'm an application engineer with Oriental Motor. In this section of the seminar, we're going to be discussing step motor, the packaged products. So what we're going to include here is going to be the motor and the drive. So we'll see the motor and the drive in our system. We're still going to be sending a pulse and direction from an external source, a controller or a PLC, but uh, we'll be discussing mainly the functions of how the drive interacts with our step motor. So there are a couple of different drive methods. Uh, the drive in itself is going to determine which phases inside the motor get turned on. So if we consider our standard 1.8 degree motor, our first two ways to uh, drive is going to be called their full step method. So we'll move 1.8 degrees per pulse. We'll also discuss a half step method, which would then decrease it to 0.9 degrees per pulse, and then micro stepping. Now these are all electrical ways to get different step angles, not mechanical like we talked about uh, in the previous section of the seminar. So the first is called a wave drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to energize phase A, then phase B, then phase A bar, then phase B bar in order to get motion. I'm going to put full current down each one of these different phases and we're going to move 1.8 degrees every time I move full current from one phase to the next. Very simple, uh, the most straightforward way to do it. But we'll be moving 1.8 degrees on the standard step motor. The next way that we can do this is still going to generate 1.8 degrees per pulse, but we have two phases on at a time. So I have A phase and the B phase on with full current, and I'll line up directly in between with my rotor. Next, I'll sequence to having B and A bar on at the same time. I'll move 1.8 degrees, and I'll line up directly between those two phases, and so forth. We'll see um, to get moving clockwise. Now, the advantage of having two phases on instead of one is more torque. We're going to see that our resultant vector by having two phases on is this right here. We'll get about 40% more torque by having two phases on, so 1.4 units of torque when two phases are on versus one, so that's a big advantage. Uh, next we'll discuss half step. So this utilizes the first two methods here. We're going to have one phase on at first, then two phases on, then one phase, then two phases. Every time electrically we're going to command the motor to go 0.9 degrees instead of 1.8 degrees. So I'll line up directly with phase A, and then I'll line up in between two phases, then directly with phase B, and so on. Uh, the next way to do it is called micro-step, or micro-stepping. Um, in order to do this, we're going to put full current on phase A. We'll see that we're going to full current here, no current yet on phase B. But then we're going to take off a little bit from phase A, put it on phase B, take off more from phase A, and put more on phase B. We're going to go according to these offset sine type waves here. So this is going to allow us to index somewhere in between each one of these A phase and B phase, or, or any of the phases. So we can get much finer um, steps than 0.9 degrees or 1.8 degrees. It's going to be dependent on the drivers how fine you can get it. But, uh, for instance, one of ours, uh, Oriental Motor Step uh, Motor Drives, can get up to 125,000 steps per revolution. So it's really dependent on the drive as to how much you can micro-step. So what are the advantages of a smaller step angle? Why do I want to do this? The main advantages are going to be a smoother motion and then a higher resolution. So you see less vibration. It's going to be very, you know, very smooth motion and more stopping points. So I have a demo that I want to take a look at right now. Uh, it is. We'll see it right here. We're going to have three different motor and drive combinations here. There's a motor and a drive here um, that's going to be full stepping, and then we'll have a micro stepping motor and drive and a micro stepping motor and drive over here. And we'll take a look at going the same speeds, how we can, uh, how this is going to be affected. So if I turn this on, 
We'll see. Right now, I just have the motor on the left turned on. This motor right here. Now, let's zoom in. We can see there's little beads that we're trying to move in here so we can see the vibration. Now, this one's creating some noise. It's also it's not, very, not a very smooth motion at all. So you can see my hand is actually vibrating with it when I try and place it on top of it. Um, so this motor is just full stepping, not very smooth motion at all. Um, it's also going to be dependent on what speed we go. Right now I'm going about 9.6 RPM. As I try and go faster, it will smooth out at some points, and at other points it will vibrate more. So it's very dependent on what speed you're running at, but in general, not very smooth motion. Now if we take a look at the other micro-stepping drives, So we can see here, this one, very quiet. The beads aren't moving at all. Um, I'll go to a slower speed so you can see how it acts. Here's, here's that 9.6 RPM that we were seeing a lot of vibration with with the first motor. Again, no, not much vibration at all on this one. And that's all due to making it a smaller step angle. We're going to be micro-stepping this as opposed to full-stepping it. And then another example of a micro-stepping drive. We'll see this one. Actually, even smoother than the middle one because we're actually micro-stepping much finer steps on this one than on that second motor. So we'll see almost no vibration, no noise with this motor at all. Uh, right now we're going 9.6 RPM, can go slower, can go faster. It really doesn't depend on the speed. We're going at a very smooth motion in, in pretty much all the speeds there. So, next we'll talk about the different driver types. So we have a couple different drivers. The first one is going to be called the unipolar drive. We'll typically use this with our 1.8 degree motor or our 0.9 degree um, type motor. It's, it uses half of the coil inside the motor. So we'll see that we can only use, we can only put current flowing down half each time. So I can open up this transistor here have my current flow down A, or open up this one and have current flow down my A bar. But I'm only able to use one half of that. That's going to minimize how much torque I can get out of it. I'm only using half the coil, so I won't be able to get as much torque out as if I was using the whole thing, but it's going to get high speed capabilities because I do have a pretty low inductance by doing that. Um, our next option is called a bipolar drive. So this has a lot of functionality. Um, there's ways to hook it up three different ways. We can get the same performance, as I mentioned, from the unipolar drive um, by doing what's called bipolar half coil and only hooking up half of the coil. Or I can hook it up in bipolar series, which is going to give us higher torque. Um, but it does have a higher inductance, which is going to give us lower speed. So the reason why I'm getting higher torque is that I'm using the full coil. I'm having current flow, I'll open up this transistor and this one for my A phase. I'll have current flow through both coils and around. Or for A bar, I would go through three and four. So I would go this direction. Um, because I'm going through two series of coil, higher torque, but I'm also getting a higher inductance because I'm going through twice the amount of copper wire. Another option here would be called bipolar parallel. So I'll put the coils in parallel instead of series now, open up the same transistors to get either A or A bar, and I'll have current flow in one direction or the other. Now that's going to give us, again, high torque because I'm using the full uh, coil of wire, but it's also going to give us low inductance because my coils are in parallel now, so I'm really only going through it at one time here. 
So because they're in parallel, low inductance, which is going to give us very high speed performance. Um, downside of bipolar parallel is it does require a higher uh, current value. Uh, the next is called a new pentagon bipolar drive. So these are typically used with the 0.72 degree and the 0.36 degree type motors. Um, we'll see the X to, to put um, current down all 10 of those poles. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on either the A phase, the B phase, the C phase, the D phase, or the E phase. This is going to give us very smooth motion because our basic step angle is either 0.72 or 0.36. So much smaller than uh, the 1.8 or the 0.9 degree uh, per pulse, the other type of motors. So that's going to give us a very quick response, quiet operation, and smooth motion. Take a look at the comparison here. We'll see that with unipolar or half coil, we get less torque out because we're only using that half coil, but we do get up to some pretty high speeds here. Uh, then if we go to bipolar series, high torque at the low end, but it drops off pretty, you know, pretty quick here. Bipolar parallel, kind of the best of both worlds here. Um, we do have high torque at the low end, also fast speeds. Again, the downside of that is that you do have to increase the amount of current that you supply. Um, and then our new pentagon, we're going to see pretty high torque to start out with, and then it gets, you know, in between maybe unipolar and that bipolar parallel. So somewhere in between. But again, we'll get very smooth motion with that uh, that new Pentagon bipolar drive. So it's really it's very application specific as to which works best. Let's take a look at our voltage input to the drive. Um, are we going to input AC? Are we going to input DC? It's it's dependent on how the drive is designed, but which one would be better for specific applications? Um, so right now we're going to take a look at our, the inductance over resistance time constant. So what this shows us is if I'm inputting current into a winding, it takes a certain number of time constants to get 100% current into the winding. Um, inductance is going to be the resistance to getting current into the, into the winding. So if I'm trying to go from A phase to B phase to A bar to B bar very, very quickly, I'm not going to have enough time to get 100% of my current into the winding. So I'm going to start lagging behind on this curve here. Um, the shorter time that I have, the less torque I'm going to get out because I get less current into the winding. So let's take a look at that a little bit, uh, a little bit differently. We look at a PK266-02 motor. It's rated for 3.6 volts. I would get a curve a torque speed curve that looks like this. Input 3.6 volts at 1,000 hertz, which is pretty low speed here. We'll get almost no torque. Uh, you really would only have torque at very, very low speeds. You know, 0 to 50 RPM or something. You might get some torque out of this kind of motor um, when you're inputting 3.6 volts. So what always happens is that we put in more voltages than what's rated. The voltage rating is really only going to tell us how much torque I can get out at zero RPM. As long as I put in 3.6 volts or more, I'll get the appropriate amount of holding torque. But it says nothing about what I'll get at faster speeds. Uh, the more voltage that I put in, that's going to help push in that current faster into the winding, and it's going to give me more torque out at faster speeds. So we'll see if I put in 12 Volts, I get a little bit more torque at higher speeds, 24, uh, 60, 160. So the more voltage I can put in, um, the faster that current gets put in the winding and the more torque I get out at higher speeds. Look at this a little bit different. Uh, number of time constants here. I'm trying to get in my rates. We typically don't put in more than the rated current because the motor will heat up pretty quickly. Um, so let's take a look at getting up to rated current, number of time constants. Now if I put in more voltage, really what we're going to do is we're just going to eliminate some of those time constants. We're going to pump that current in there faster by having a higher voltage.
Now, what do these drive voltages really mean? If I'm putting an AC into my drive, most of the time that's going to convert over to 160 volts DC to the motor. So if I'm using an AC drive, I get very good performance. When I'm using a DC drive, it's going to be dependent on what the drive is set up for. A lot of them will be set up for 24 volts. Um, some of them will be set up for 20 to 75 volts DC. So if you're looking for a DC drive with very good performance, the ones that are rated for a higher voltage DC will get you better performance. Uh, the downside is that you're going to need a DC power supply that's going to output, uh, you know, pretty high voltage. So that would be the uh, that would be a negative. Um, but it is easily available to get it, you know, 24, 48, even up to you know 70 or 75 volt DC power supplies. So if you have any questions on the step motor drives that I discussed here, the theory behind them, feel the free to give tech support a call, 800-468-3982, or tech support at orientalmotor.com is the email address. Thank you.